our next presenter is Elizabeth Berger. Elizabeth is from the Department of Public Science. Elizabeth's presentation is entitled Watching the Watchdog. When was the last time that you insulted or criticized an elected leader? Five minutes ago? Maybe this morning? Last night on Twitter? Well, this man, a Turkish man, posted on Facebook a picture here comparing the Turkish leader Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the character Gollum from Lord of the Rings a few years ago. Not a particularly flattering comparison, and a Turkish court found this as well. The man was ultimately found guilty of the crime of insulting the president. In the past few years, more than 2,000 of these cases of criminal insults have been lodged against individuals in Turkey. Turkey has also gained the dubious honor of becoming the world's worst jailer of journalists. But on the other hand, not too long ago, Turkey was held up as this successful example of democratization, transitioning from a military government in the 1980s to multi-party elections. And this contradiction between violations of media freedom and free speech and democratization is not only a question in the Turkish case, but also something that we see in countries in Central and Eastern Europe and in Latin America as well. And this leads us to this question of why do we see these violations against free speech in countries that are weak democracies? I look at this question through the lens of the Turkish case, and I find that leaders can both benefit from uh, censoring media and they have advantages if they allow for greater open media freedom. And so what is the reason why leaders choose one path over another path? Why would they choose to censor media or why would they choose to promote media freedom? I look more closely at the cases of media censorship in Turkey and I find that interestingly, in the past we saw that leaders chose to informally repress media or intimidate journalists but today, we instead see that they use existing institutions or courts or laws, such as laws about criminal insult, to repress media and create a self-censorship environment. In addition, I find that these instances of censorship are more likely to occur around the times of elections rather than at any other point in history. And so what this leads us to is this question of perhaps elections, the very foundation or hallmark of what we think of as constituting democracy, are what's prompting leaders to attempt to censor free speech and media. So the moral of this story, not just don't tweet about Gollum, but the moral of the story here is that the institutions of democracy, which we think of as working and supporting each other, courts, elections, the press, don't always do so, but can in fact be used by individuals to work against each other and undermine democracy as a whole. Thank you.